Last year, I made a video called the best upgrade for your Crowdy Ender 3 in 2020. And in that video, I talked about a low cost drop-in replacement board for the Crowdy Ender 3 called the Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3. At the time, it was the version 1.2. Some of the highlights I discussed was that, again, it was a low cost 32-bit board. It was the exact same form factor as the Crowdy board, so you could just drop it in. It came pre-flashed with Ender 3 firmware, so you literally had to do nothing but plug in the cables and you were ready to go. It had a port for a BL Touch, making it easy to add auto bed leveling. It had silent TMC2209 drivers and the ability to add a touch screen if that's something you wanted to do. Now, since then, Big Tree Tech has released a few refreshes of this board. I believe the latest is the Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3 version 2.0. But regardless of the version, this has been a very impressive board that I've recommended to a ton of people, and I've got these in both of my Ender 3s. Well, Big Tree Tech recently released the E3 RRF, which for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna call the RRF, which has a lot of similarities to that SKR Mini E3 that I just mentioned, but also has some additional features and some really interesting upgrades over that previous board. So in today's video, we are going to take a look at the RRF. We'll go over its specs and I will give you my opinion on this board to hopefully provide you with a bit more information as to whether this is something you may want to upgrade your printer to. A couple of weeks ago when I was playing around with one of my Ender 3s, the one, my original Ender 3 that has the SKR Mini E3, I accidentally shorted something out on the board and uh, it has been down since then. So I'm really excited to get this installed and get that printer printing again. So without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They have thousands of video lessons covering anything from 3D printing and CAD design to electronics and sound design, just to name a few. Skillshare classes include a combination of video lessons as well as class projects. I've been wanting to continue on with learning Python and have been going through a lesson called Complete Python Course. This course starts off fairly basic with going over data types and goes all the way through web scraping and data analysis. This particular instructor moves quickly, which I really enjoy as it keeps me engaged. The premium membership is less than $10 a month, but Skillshare did provide me with their promo link for the first thousand subscribers to click the link in the description we'll get a free trial of their premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. I've really been enjoying using this platform and look forward to hearing your favorite classes. Starting off, let's talk about the specs of the RRF. So it is the exact same form factor as the SKR Mini E3, meaning that it will be a drop-in for your Ender 3 or CR10 and just about all Creality printers I can think of. I haven't opened all of their new machines, so I'm not sure if they have a different footprint, but most of the existing Creality machines in their ecosystem will uh, this board will be a drop in as far as form factor goes. What that means for you is you don't have to print out a custom mounting solution. You don't have to worry about where the board's going to go. You can just undo the existing board, bolt this one into the exact same holes and you will be set. I do want to clarify that although it does seem like this board is geared more towards Creality printers, at least in the thought process of designing it due to that form factor, it's by no means just capable of working with Creality printers. You could essentially put this board into any machine because you can uh, adjust the firmware on there to match whatever printer parameters that you are installing this in. The chip on the RRF board is an ARM Cortex M4, which is a 32-bit chip with a frequency of 168 megahertz. This is an upgrade from the M3 that was used on the SKR Mini E3, which had a frequency of 72 megahertz. With that being said, it's unlikely that you are going to be needing or using that added horsepower, but it is at least nice to see that as Big Tree Tech is going through these different boards, they are also upgrading the chip that is on them. The RRF comes with TMC2209 drivers running in UART mode. This means that you'll be able to adjust things like voltage or the micro steps from the firmware itself. These TMC2209s will also allow for some pretty awesome features like stealth chop and sensorless homing. Compared to the previous boards, the RRF has one large heatsink that covers all of the stepper motor drivers held in place by two pins. I like this much better than the previous version, which was basically independent little heat sinks with double-sided adhesive. I could never get them to stay and often cables or something would bump them and the heat sinks would fall off. So I do really like the cooling solution or the heat sink that they went with with the RRF board. The RRF is able to run Marlin 2.0 or RepRap firmware. They do have pre-compiled 
uh, firmware.bin files over on the GitHub for the Ender 3 uh, in a couple different variants, but they also have the main source code. So that way, again, if you don't have an Ender 3 or if like me, you have an upgraded Ender 3 where a few things need to be changed, you can go ahead and download that and adjust the parameters to match that of your printer. The RRF board will work with both 12 volt and 24 volt systems. And one thing that's quite interesting and unique about this is that there is actually an ESP 8266 Wi-Fi module on the underside of the board. This will work with ESP32 if you go with Marlin or DWC if you go with the RepRap firmware. I feel like I made it pretty clear on this channel, but I am a huge fan of OctoPrint. That is my go-to for wirelessly controlling just about any 3D printer. And with that being said, I don't necessarily think the Wi-Fi built into the board is going to be a big deal for me or something that I'll probably be using very often because I really enjoy OctoPrint and all of the various plugins and things that are available for that. However, I can really see this being attractive for somebody that doesn't necessarily care about all the things that OctoPrint has and maybe just wants a way to be able to send files, start jobs or uh, control certain aspects of their printer wirelessly and having the chip embedded on the bottom of the board does go for a very clean setup. With that being said, if you were like myself or just do not want to use the Wi-Fi uh, module, it's certainly something that you don't have to do and it is by choice if you decide to opt uh, to enable that and to use that. So if you do install this inside of an Ender 3 or a similar machine, there are quite a few expansion ports. Some of those are a uh, second stepper motor slot with a included driver for a second Z axis motor if you wanna have dual lead screws. You've got a filament runout sensor port, a BL touch port, a NeoPixel port, uh, there's a port for, they've got these little, they call it their UPS board, where basically it plugs in from the power supply to this board, and then that board gets signal from the RRF board in this instance. And when a print is done, you can actually give that board the power to completely kill the power to your printer. So for someone that maybe wants that or just wants to have an extra safety step where they know that when a print job is done, the printer's not gonna be sitting idle, well, you can have it where it does do that for you. One thing that is super interesting about this board is the expansion board they have called their, I think it's the RRF IDEX expansion board. And for those of you that don't know what IDEX is, it stands for independent dual extrusion. And it is a dual extrusion type of system where basically a printer has a hot end and an extruder and a hot end and extruder, and they are not attached to each other. So they can move independently from each other. Usually they share um, the same X axis, but they have their own belts so they can move you know, either with each other or opposite of each other. And that will allow you to one, do standard dual extrusion prints with dual materials or dual colors. It'll also allow you to run mirror mode. So if you have a small part, it essentially divides the bed in half and you can print two of the same part or you can do it in mirror mode where it does a mirrored version of that. So um, they have an IDEX expansion board available for this RRF board. Although I didn't get this expansion board, this would plug directly into the main RRF board and would give you two extra stepper motor drivers and stepper motor ports, as well as additional thermistor, heater, and cooling fan slots. Now, Big Tree Tech has been teasing over on Twitter their BQB1 running in IDEX mode, which makes me think that they might end up coming out with some kind of combination of this board, as well as an IDEX upgrade kit for that printer, which is pretty exciting. Personally, I think that if they are able to make it where their B1 printer or or the other printer they offer, which thinks the R1 or the RX is upgradable to IDEX in a relatively simple way that there might be some demand for this. I already on this channel and so many people I know get a printer and basically upgrade every element of it as they grow with the printer. So the main board, the extruder, the hot end, uh, you know, the, the bed, whatever else. And so the next step, I guess, would be to add a second extruder if that's something that you want. And most of the solutions I've seen so far are pretty hacky and complicated and not very clean. So if they are able to implement something like this, I do think that there could definitely be some demand for it. As far as installing the RRF, it is going to be incredibly simple. You're basically going to be attaching the antenna to the bottom ESP chip, as well as adding some jumpers if you do decide you want to have the uh, sensorless homing. I just ended up keeping the end stops. I might play around with sensorless homing at some point, but for now it was not a big deal to me. And you're going to unplug everything from your existing board and plug it into the RRF. Again, if you've got specifically like the Ender 3, the plugs are identical and everything is going to be very easy to transfer over. However, I will say that if you've never done a board swap before, 
I highly recommend that you pull out your phone and take some pictures of how everything is uh, positioned just so that way you have an idea of how to reverse anything if you should need to. There's been plenty of times in the past where I've opened up something for the first time and been like, great, and just taken it all apart and then I can't for the life of me find pictures online or figure out how to put everything back together. So lesson learned is if you're doing something for the first time and you're disassembling, always take some photos so that way you have a reference point. One thing that tripped me out was when I had everything plugged in, I turned on the printer and my TFT50 from Big Tree Tech as well, wasn't able to detect this board. And I thought that was really strange. Everything was plugged in correctly. The machine had power. So then I went ahead and plugged in OctoPrint to this board to see if I could detect it and see what the printer was doing. And OctoPrint also couldn't, uh, couldn't detect the board. And so after quite a bit of head scratching, I ended up realizing that the main board actually doesn't come pre-installed any firmware. I got so used to the SKR Mini E3 already coming with Marlin 2.0 on there that it completely blindsided me that they didn't ship the boards with any firmware built onto them. So as far as firmware goes, I did mention that you have the option to use Marlin 2.0 or RepRap. If you have an Ender 3, you've got the pre-compiled uh, versions over on the GitHub, which I can link you in the description below. All you need to do for Marlin 2.0 is download the firmware.bin file and for RepRap, if you wanna go RepRap, download the firmware.bin file and the couple other folders that they have, um, put them on the root of your micro SD card, plug them into your printer and flip on the printer. It'll take 10 to 15 seconds maybe and it will flash the board's firmware and you'll be ready to rock and roll. If you don't have an Ender 3, they do also have the source code so you can download those and modify those to your liking uh, you know, for your specific printer. I did want to note that when it comes to the Wi-Fi, although I said I'm not really going to be using it, I did want to see if I could test it out. And I tried it out on the Marlin 2.0 side using the ESP3D and I had no luck. It wasn't that the hardware was not working. I just had no idea how to configure it. The instructions in the GitHub at the time were in Chinese. And I did reach out to Big Tree Tech that did send me some English instructions, but it was still a little bit hazy and unclear as far as what the correct steps were to enable this. So I'm hoping that I will be able to update you guys with instructions on how to get the Wi-Fi working on the Marlin side. So I've actually never used RepRap firmware. I have pretty much exclusively used used Marlin from the Marlin 1.0 and to the Marlin 2.0 fork. Luckily, my buddy Chris Riley over at Chris's basement is a wizard when it comes to 3D printing firmware. And he actually got one of these boards and covered getting it set up with RepRap and getting the Wi-Fi working on the RepRap side of things. So if you wanna use the Wi-Fi, you can use the RepRap firmware. It is worth noting though that the stock Creality LCD screen with the rotary knob does not work on the RepRap firmware side of things. So you will need to upgrade to something like the Big Tree Tech TFT or another compatible uh, touch screen out there. I will go ahead and place a link in the description over to Chris's video if you do want to install the RepRap firmware and you're a little bit of uh, unclear on how to do so or how to enable the Wi-Fi, I highly recommend checking out his video. It is super easy to follow. When I was researching this board and trying to figure out the ESP3D side of things, I did stumble across an awesome article over on a website called Make and Print that basically shows you every detail on how to plug in this board to every single cable with a lot of fantastic information. So if you do feel like you need a little bit more handholding and aren't just comfortable with unplugging and plugging things in and you want kind of step-by-step -step photos, it is a fantastic article and links for that will also be in the description of this video. The Big Tree Tech E3 RRF is definitely an impressive board and it looks like the price point is going to be around $40 with the IDEX expansion board being somewhere between $10 and $50, which I think is more than fair. Big Tree Tech really came out swinging last year with the release of their 32-bit boards, and it doesn't seem like they plan on giving up the throne anytime soon. I have really enjoyed watching the development and evolution of these low-cost 32-bit boards over the last year here. Now, if you already have the SKR Mini E3 installed, I don't know that I, I would upgrade to the RRF because there are a lot of similarities between the two, although the RRF does have some additional features and upgraded components. The main reason I could see someone upgrading from the SKR Mini E3 to the RRF would be if you decide you wanna do something with that IDEX board and the SKR Mini E3 just can't do it. However, if you do have a stock Creality board and it's not a 32-bit board, or maybe it is a 32-bit board, but you want some of the additional features that the um, RRF offers, I do think that it is a great value and definitely an awesome upgrade. With the additional features and specs of the RRF board, I do feel that Big Tree Tech is going to be eventually phasing out the SKR Mini E3. I just don't see what purpose it fills if they've got this board with some additional capabilities at the exact or nearly exact same price point. 
Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. And also let me know what your thoughts are on this board as well as the IDEX board, because I think that is something that is really interesting. And I know that a lot of people that love to hack up their printers may be interested in just this. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how the IDEX board develops or continues to develop and what sort of kits they end up rolling out to make the uh, conversion process a little bit easier and hopefully smooth sailing for most people. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single week, so there is always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to my Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. You guys are absolutely amazing. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Deanna from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.